A toll hike on the pike, how much more you'll pay at 11. They never expected to see combat. Am I scared? Yes, I'm scared. Scared to death. Massachusetts soldiers are headed for Iraq, where the deadliest weapons are hardest to detect. It could be that car. It could be behind that stop sign. It could be behind that barrier. It could be, it could be in the middle of the road. It could be anywhere. Testing their readiness in the scorching heat of Fort Dix, uh, New Jersey. I asked him not to go. Their families pay a price. How do you ask a man to fight an increasingly unpopular war? In harm's way, next on Chronicle. Good evening. The latest ABC Washington Post poll reveals that 59% of Americans think the Iraq war is not worth fighting. How then do you ask a soldier to put himself in harm's way, to leave his family, his job, everything precious to him, to fight an unpopular war. And Anthony, that is the situation for hundreds of National Guard soldiers from Massachusetts. They are our neighbors, our friends, our co-workers, many of whom signed up years ago for reasons from educational benefits to the camaraderie of the military. We joined one guard unit, the 181, in training at Fort Dix just two weeks before they left for Baghdad. You need help? You need help? Yes, it's going down! Summer 2007, Fort Dix, New Jersey. In two weeks, these men will head for Iraq. They will no longer study war, they will be living it. Most of these men are not career soldiers. They are salesmen, bankers, and members of the state police, all from Massachusetts. Mike Feiner, a financial advisor from Swampscott, is responsible for ensuring his men are well-trained for Iraq. I couldn't be prouder of everyone to have validated 100% of our 41 tactical tasks on time so efficiently and being prepared for the RTEP. Oh. Which means that we'll be validated probably as of Tuesday or Wednesday in preparation to go to Iraq. Oh. Oh. Here at Fort Dix, New Jersey, men of the 181st Infantry are getting ready to go to Iraq. When they get there, the biggest threat, the IED, improvised explosive device. In Vietnam, there was sort of the perception of, you know, it's hard to identify the enemy. But it's hard to identify the, the weapon in this environment more than the enemy. Like, what are you going to be attacked by? It's not so much, you know, a rifle or other things. It may be by these explosives that are difficult to detect. So we, we're doing a massive amount of training here to understand what the high probability locations would be, how to identify locations. How do you train a soldier for a war where IEDs, crude, easy-to-make bombs, difficult to detect, are the cause of four out of five deaths of American soldiers and Marines? The answer, the 181st lives every day as if they were already in Iraq. A welcome to the city of Balad, New Jersey. <laughs> in Arabic, too. In Arabic, too, and this is... Uh, designed so that the soldiers can start to immerse themselves in the Arabic language and to get a, a real feeling, immersion feeling, of exactly how it's going to be once they get to Iraq. This is the local mosque, mm -hmm. and we train at the local mosque so that we can understand the cultural issues with, with the mosque. Um, it's obviously a, a center of city life or town life. Um, a lot of the elders are here, the imams, other things and whatnot. So this is obviously a very, very sensitive site. Some of these are, you know, local coffee spots, chai spots, tea spots. Some are people's homes. This is a little store. Mm -hmm. So this is a little uh, store to our left. Uh, so this is to simulate everything that you might encounter um, in the population. It's almost hard to explain the feeling, but it, you feel like you've been transported to Iraq. Yeah, I feel I feel like my we call it our spider sense from Spider-Man, right? I feel my spider sense up here that you just once you're here, we're no longer at Fort Dix, but we're in 
Iraq, for me, for Iraq or Afghanistan, observing everything in the area. And yet, you're also very much on the lookout for IEDs or the, the feel of what might be an IED. And what do you see when you look down a street like that and you think something might go off? I think the one thing that I've learned while I've been here at Fort Dix and we've gone through an enormous amount of IED training is that there are no rules. Anything that can explode and, and can be an IED possibly could. It can be buried, it can be, it could be that car, it could be behind that stop sign, it could be behind that barrier, it could be, it could be in the middle of the road, it could be anywhere. So what you call your spider sense, really you're on high alert, the adrenaline's rushing and you're really looking at everything. The adrenaline's rushing and we're trying to get in the mind of the enemy. Where would they possibly plant this? How would they want to hurt us? How can we outthink them? How can we think faster? Drives his other hand, knife end first, into his opponent's legs to the back of that thigh. IEDs won't be the only danger in Iraq. Unlike any recent war, soldiers are more likely to experience hand-to-hand -hand combat. It's a much more face-to-face -face situation, so um, it's, it's different from before. It's an urban setting, which urban is it's much closer in proximity, and it's a close quarter battle instead of uh, being far away. Maine native Sergeant Zachary Kazan is one of eight volunteer instructors recently returned from Iraq. He is teaching soldiers a technique based on a Brazilian form of jiu-jitsu. Um, whether you're overseas or anywhere else, the majority of fights will end up you know, on the ground. So once you're on the ground, we teach them what to do. A lot of people panic once they're on the ground, and we want to avoid that. Kazan says today's Army strives to build confidence in soldiers, like First Lieutenant John Quinn. It's not, uh, not boxing. It's survivability. It's when you get into a fight, uh, this is how to get out of the fight or end it and sort of uh, turn from a position of disadvantage to a position of advantage so that you're able to, to control them. So you do feel prepared, you feel ready? Absolutely. Couldn't feel more prepared at this point. Ready to, ready to go. But what will they do when they're in country and under attack? Up next, doing without at home. There are people who are sacrificing, who are having trouble feeding their families when they're gone because they earn less money and they're not whimpering a bit. Later, one family's farewell. Closed caption funding provided by Liberty Mutual Insurance. Responsibility. What's your policy? Liberty Mutual. Come to KFC for a 10-piece double mash meal. With 10 pieces of the Colonel's famous chicken, two large mashed potatoes with gravy, and four biscuits for only $16.99. Let the bonding begin. And don't forget our KFC famous bowls. Who do you like today at Suffolk Downs? I like pick em winners. I like a midnight ride. I like a horse that can run like the wind. I like winning a few clams. I like the history. Who do you like today? I like a Boston landmark. I like being Frank from Gloucester. I like any horse that's not from New York. I like taking the blue line. I like a photo finish. Who do you like today? Who do you like today? Who do you like today at Suffolk Downs? Join us for live racing every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Saturday. Post time is 1245. Audiences are cheering for the game plan. Wow. It's the number one comedy. Wow. And the number one movie in America. I mean, wow. From Walt Disney Pictures. Mom's go over there. The game plan. Ready PG. Plan to see it now. Go ahead, Wooly. He's bleeding out. It is 97 degrees under a blazing sun as the 181st trains at a makeshift forward operating base. Here at Fort Dix, the battle is a drill. These soldiers know the real thing waits for them in Iraq. Lieutenant Colonel Michael Feiner must lead his troops through more than 50 tasks before training is complete. Who is your right limit? Uh, my right limit is that pine tree right in front of us, and left is all the way down to the end of the burn. These tasks include recognizing IEDs, learning about Iraqi culture, and even administering IV fluids. What's the single most important thing about training these guys? The, the single most important thing is for them to be 100% ready so that we can come back 100% whole, 100% safe with no injuries, everyone 
happy and alive and with all their body parts. That's without question, without reservation, that is the number one responsibility that we have during training. As they prepare for Iraq, IEDs are what scare these soldiers most. As a Massachusetts state trooper, Captain Louis Rodriguez of Southbridge is accustomed to danger. But this, he says, is different. We're training, but if you see what a 155 round can do to a vehicle, there's nothing left. Am I scared? Yes, I'm scared. Scared to death. I'd be lying if I would say otherwise. The same fears keep family members up at night. Back in Swampscott, Colonel Finer's wife Ellen says she's most frightened of the unknown. You know, you never know what Al-Qaeda is going to do next. He, you know, his soldiers don't know, you know, what they're, you know, what they're going to be facing. All they know is that they're just under Michael's command and they're safe with that. So if they're safe with that, I guess I'll have to be safe with it. Finer expects he and his men could be gone a year or more. While he's gone, Ellen will keep the business and the family going with some help from Michael's mother, Lorna. Michael worries most about the children, 10-year-old Elizabeth and 7-year-old Alex. My daughter is now old enough to watch the war on television and she gets concerned. You know, sometimes she gets concerned of what happens if daddy gets hurt or what happens if daddy doesn't come back. And my son, he, he's the one who calls and actually says he misses me and when am I coming home? So that, that's kind of heart-wrenching. Adding to the emotional burden is last year's tragic accidental death of Finer's brother, Stephen. Right after Stephen, they, Michael came and told us that he had gotten his orders to go to Iraq and that I asked him not to go. I said, I just don't think I can lose another son right now. It, it's just too fresh. And he said, Mom, I have 500 men that have mothers too, and I cannot say to them, I'm sorry, I have to stay home, because, and you can't. So, Mom, please give me your blessing. Let me go. And I said, you go. Yes, I lost my brother, and it was the toughest thing I've ever gone through, no question, because we were a year apart and, you know, very close. but. What about all the guys in my unit who have three-month-old infants or have wives who now are gone for a year? I have a very good situation, great family support. You know, I can handle it financially more than most. But there are people who are sacrificing, who are having trouble feeding their families when they're gone because they earn less money, and they're not whimpering a bit. Finer, a financial advisor, made sure every one of his 30 soldiers was financially sound before leaving home. Finer's intelligence and focus on the mission inspires confidence, says Captain Rodriguez. Do you feel comfortable going into Iraq under his leadership? Yes, I do, ma'am. And why? Why? His wife said that he had to take me along, so I trust her judgment. As the sun sets on Fort Dix, Sergeant Phil Wonka of Irving grows reflective. What keeps you going in the heat and the, you know constant activity? How do you keep doing it? I guess it's just a basic motivation, knowing that you're you know you're going into harm's way, and you got to keep going. You know, plenty of people have gone before us, and it's just a drive to you know do your part. The men of the 181st say they're ready, but what about those they will leave behind? Baron Hippo said goodbye and left to see if anyone else had lost a dollar. It was 97 degrees when we were there, and if you notice, the men were wearing 60 pounds of armored weight on their mm. bodies. The training is so rough and so rigorous that they actually think that Iraq might be somewhat easier than the training at Fort Dix. That's the idea. Get them ready for the very worst. Well, they're getting ready, but you really get a sense for how broad an impact it has, not just on them individually, obviously, but their families and extended families. Colonel Mike Finer jokes that he has four salesmen in his unit. He expects them to sell democracy to the Iraqis. His own thoughts on our involvement there right after this. Up next. Do you concern yourself with the larger issues of how we got into Iraq in the first place? Do we belong there? I want what's best for my family. So when our doctor prescribed a generic drug, I was worried. But she assured me that they're just as effective. Turns out, half of all generics are made by the same company that makes the brand name. 
And in most cases, Massachusetts law requires pharmacists to provide the lowest cost equivalent. The same medicine for a lot less. Now that makes me feel better. Learn more about generic drugs at TuftsHealthPlan.com or TheBostonChannel.com. Stay connected all day with breaking news alerts from thebostonchannel.com. When you sign up for breaking news alerts, thebostonchannel.com immediately connects you to the information you need. To sign up, just enter your email address at the top of any news page and then click subscribe. Staying connected is that easy. Sign up today for breaking news alerts at thebostonchannel.com. The easy way to stay connected to news all day. Diamonds, the jewelry exchange imports diamonds direct from site holders. We have thousands, most GIA and EGL certified, laser inscribed and guaranteed the lowest price. Half carat fancies are $3.99. One carat solitaires are $5.99, $9.90 and $15.90. Two carat solitaires $19.90 and certified ISI quality $2,900. We also have super large rounds and fancies, D flawless and GIA triple excellent makes. Plus we set while you watch. Buy factory direct, the jewelry exchange in Sudbury. Come see what's new at the zoo. Don't miss Stone Zoo's Boo at the Zoo and Franklin Park Zoo's Zoo Howl. StoneZoo.org and FranklinParkZoo.org. Get close enough to really connect. In 1636, a group of colonists formed a militia that became the 181st Infantry. It is older than the Army itself. Today, the men of the Massachusetts 181st prepare to fight an increasingly unpopular war. But public sentiment isn't an issue for Captain Louis Rodriguez of Southbridge. I'll leave the politics to the politician. I got a job to perform. That's why I got the, the rank, the pay, whatever you want to say, the training. I'm, it's my turn. That's all it is. Do you concern yourself with the larger issues of how we got into Iraq in the first place? Do we belong there? It, it doesn't matter at this point. Should we have gone to Iraq? Well, I don't know. I'm going to Iraq and we're in Iraq, so it doesn't matter that you know, we, we should have gone to Iraq. It's a nice intellectual conversation for the professors to have, I suppose, of, as to whether it made sense or not for the next time to analyze whether it's good or not. But I'm trying to deal with what hand we're dealt. Just days before his departure for Iraq, Sergeant First Class Ronald Mullet is enjoying his final moments of leave. It has been a whirlwind week-long visit with his wife Siobhan and their three daughters. It's fantastic. It's good to get with them, but I, I still kind of feel like a outsider a little bit. Try not to get overly involved and mess up the routine. Uh, so I've been a guest, but it's been a good time. Mullet says he is prepared to go to Iraq, but there is no basic training for those he leaves behind. Now I'm you know, minutes away from leaving, and it's, uh, it's a lot to think about. Um, you know, there's a lot of technology out there today that helps me stay. Uh, in touch with the family, and uh, I'm thankful for that, but I know it's, it's tough on them. You want to hear her talk for the first time, walk for the first time, you know, and my oldest is going to kindergarten, it's just small things, you know, not like Christmas or birthdays or any of those things, it's, you know, the little things, my daughter is going, you know, she just won't know when you get back, you know, she'll be, you know, 18 months he returns and that's heartbreaking for me Give me a hug. Hug. You're gonna be strong for money. it's a heart-wrenching scene that's as old as war itself
And the legacy of today's 181st? Lieutenant Colonel Michael Finer hopes that one day those who look back will see another era of proud American soldiers. I hope that people think of us like they think of the World War II and Korean veterans as the greatest generation and that we did make the difference that was needed way back when. We left our jobs, we left our families, we did what we had to do. We sweated it out, we did whatever personal sacrifice to make sure that our children, our then, by then my grandchildren, have a better life. Right now, the men are in Iraq. They're at Camp Cropper. Uh, they have enormous duties. They are responsible for the security of 4,000 detainees in the internment center there. Uh, and after Abu Ghraib prison, the Army doesn't want to see any of that anymore. They have the right guys in charge right now. They are trying to make it a more humane prison where they can uh, actually do some talking to the inmates mm -hmm. and hopefully win some over. We'll be right back after this. Tomorrow at 7.30, Game 2 questions live from Fenway Park. How would Manny fit in your office? Can the Sox rookies continue to rise to the challenge? Are Fenway fans the most fanatic? We're previewing Sox Angels tomorrow on Chronicle. The Chem Center for MRI in Stoneham makes MRI exams easy and comfortable with open and high field magnets. Appointments available seven days a week, conveniently located with plenty of parking. Call the Chem Center in Stoneham to schedule your MRI. Preserving your baby's cord blood stem cells is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to help treat illnesses for your child and family in the future. New England Cord Blood Bank is the most experienced and affordable cord blood bank in the area. Call today for a free cord blood information packet. Sunlight kicks fluorescent lights, but humans just crave nature. It's part of who we are. So when I'm making food for Kashi, I know the closer to nature, the better the food. The better the food, the better we feel. And feeling good is what it's all about. Kashi, seven whole grains on a mission. The war in Iraq is costing us $13 million an hour. That's money that's not going into health care. That's money that's not going into education. I met a mother who said, you know, I'm so proud of my son. He's going in a week or two, and I'm scared to death. Please end this war. We have to change. We need to end this war, create a timetable for the withdrawal of our troops, bring them home, and care for them once they are here, now and into their future. Nikki Songus, the choice could not be clearer. I'm Nikki Songus, and I approve this message. Our dad, Bernie, doesn't like paying interest charges. And our mom, Phil, says our customers shouldn't pay them either. So at Bernie and Phil's... We offer 0% interest. Right now, get 0% interest all the way until 2010. That's right, 2010 with no down payment. Get quality furniture. With no down payment. And zero interest. It's that simple. Bernie and Phil, quality, comfort, and price. That's nice. You could spend hours looking for your next home or rental on a typical search engine, or you could find it in seconds. Just go to the bostonchannel.com's real estate page and click on Move. Finding your next home just got a lot easier. Diamonds. Half-carat fancies are $3.99. One-carat solitaires are $5.99, $9.90, and $15.90. Two-carat solitaires are $19.90. Plus thousands of GIA diamonds guaranteed the lowest price. Buy direct and save. The Jewelry Exchange in Sudbury. A 24-hour nurse line. That's going to leave a mark. For whenever you need it. That's the power of Fallon Community Health Plan. Go to our web for more information and hear now messages from the men to their families, the men now in Iraq. Good night. Good night. Hello, I'm Major Wisniewski from Lakeville, Massachusetts. I just want to say hello to my wife, Holly, and my three kids and the rest of my family. Take care. I'll see you soon. Hi everybody, this is Lieutenant Med Fooney from Seekonk, Massachusetts. I just want to say hi to my baby girl Annalise and to my friends and family and Raina. Take care. Bye. I'm Staff Sergeant Joshua Kirschmeyer. I'm from Franklin, Massachusetts. I have family in Franklin in, uh, and also in Florida. And I just wanted to say hello to my wife Michelle and my son Joshua. Staff Sergeant Mojica from Worcester. Hi honey, love you. You're the love of my life. Hi kids. Daddy loves you. First Sergeant Michelle from Springfield, Massachusetts. Hi Hannah. Hi Laurie. Hey Louie. Love yous. Hello. 
Staff Sergeant MacArthur from Fitchburg, Massachusetts. Hi, Amy. Love you. See you soon. <laughs> Staff Sergeant Cackett from Phillipston, Mass. Shannon, I love you, and I'll see you soon. Bye. Sergeant First Class Steve Duplin, I love you, Karen, Lauren, and Kristen. Who up? I'm Lieutenant John Quinn from Middleton, New Hampshire. I love you, Kelly and Keegan. See you soon. Lieutenant Grant Moon from Burlington, Massachusetts. Mom, Michelle, David, Brad, Tracy, love you. See you soon. I'm Staff Sergeant Jesse Votor. I just wanted to say hi, Mom, Dad, my two kids, Nicholas and Brianna, and my wife, Angela. I love you all. Sergeant First Class Harry George Akakis, Abington, Massachusetts. Hi, Joanne and Kara. See you in eight months. Hi, this is Special Gagnon. Just wanted to say hi, Mom, Dad, uh, Maureen, Laura, Kathy, uh, Chelsea. Love and miss you all. First Sergeant Dave Perella from uh, Salem, New Hampshire. I'd like to say hi to my wife, Karen, my daughter, Natalie, and everyone from uh, New England Bible Church. Cool. I'm Captain Josh Romano from Townsend, Massachusetts. I want to say hi to Sarah, Brendan, Laura, Andy, and everybody at Lunenburg High School. I love you guys. See you soon. My name is Captain Rodriguez. I'm from Southbridge, Massachusetts. Bendición a mi familia, and I'll see you soon. I'm Captain Phil McGovern from Woburn, Massachusetts. I want to say hi to mom and dad, uh, my brothers Johnny and Kevin, uh, relatives and friends. Thanks for all your love and support, and I'll see you soon. My name is Brian McNeil from Shrewsbury, Massachusetts. I'd like to say hi to my mom and dad, my sister, and Owen, and uh, all my friends too. Hi, Lieutenant Greg Squalia. I'd like to say hi to my wife, Amy, and my kids, Zoe and Troy. I love and miss you, and I'll see you soon. Major Ron Couples from Easton, Mass. I'd like to say hello, and I love you to Gretchen, Ryan, and Margaret, Dylan, and Cecilia, and mom and dad. I'll see you soon. Hi, I'm Specialist Mike Dada from Massachusetts. I just want to say hi to the Dada family and the Lucia family. I love you, and I'm doing well. Hi, I'm Sergeant First Class Murphy from Holyoke, Massachusetts. I'd like to say hi to my parents, uh, Kathleen and George, and my daughter Deirdre, my son Aiden, and my fiance Nadine. Sergeant First Class Ron Mullet from Attleboro, Massachusetts. Hello to Siobhan, Roisin, Bridget, and Beatrice. Go Rage! Hi, I'm Lieutenant Mike Feiner from Swampscott, Massachusetts. I just want to say hello to Mom, Dad, Kathy, Ellen, Elizabeth, Alex, and all the family. We're live on 5 and this is the lottery. Welcome to the numbers game, I'm Bradley. Tonight's cash windfall jackpot is an estimated $1.6 million. And well done to Hunts Mills Tavern in Seekonk. They sold a set for life instant ticket with a $1 million prize. Let's check out the daily number for Thursday, October 4th. Waiting for that last wheel or first wheel. We have 3709. Again, 3709. Check out Cash Windfall tonight at 1120. A Chronicle Special. What are the world's most livable, successful, desirable places? I don't know why you'd want to live anywhere else. It's easy living here. I'm in love with this city because it has such high expectations. And how can Boston move to the top of the list? Chronicle teams up with MIT, traveling the world, showing you four up-and-coming places competing with the hub, unlocking their strategies for success so we can use their lessons to create a better future Boston. Chronicle, in high definition. Special reports starting Tuesday at 7.30. New laws require Massachusetts residents to have health insurance. So, to the thousands of people who signed up with Blue Cross since health care reform became law, welcome. And if you're still looking for a plan, Blue Cross Blue Shield may be within your reach, too. Call 1-888-334-BLUE. That's 1-888-334-BLUE. Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey reimagines the circus with the biggest changes in 50 years. So new, it's beyond your wildest dreams. The all-new Circus of Dreams stirs your imagination with chills, thrills, and the chance to be a part of the circus action. You've never experienced a Ringling Brothers like Circus of Dreams. Come experience the biggest changes in 50 years. Playing TD Bank North Garden October 5th through the 14th. Get your tickets today. Shoe lovers, rejoice, for we have Marshalls and all the brand name shoes other stores can envy and all the gasp-inducing savings only Marshalls can offer and all the red leather heels our carts can hold and all the days of the year to wear them. Marshalls, shop on. 
At 11, two Boston firefighters intoxicated when they were killed in the line of duty. And tonight, the firefighters' union's threat to the person who leaked the information. Storm Team 5 tracking how hot it will be tomorrow and if the heat will last through the weekend. It's tonight at 11. New Center 5 takes an in-depth look at the different sides of breast cancer, cutting-edge screenings, how men cope when their partners become patients, and meet survivors. Know the facts. Be empowered. It's every woman's rest. Every newscast starting Sunday.